Hello everyone and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, I am no expert mixologist, but I am an adventurous spirit, and like anyone tending bar in a cave, I'm willing to try most things once. So, I don't have a menu or a call list or anything to go back to, but if you're looking for something to drink or something to try, I do have a set of gaming dice, and I am absolutely willing to roll them to see what goes into this cocktail. And I tell you what, I will try it first, and I'll let you know how it is, and if it sounds good, you can make it yourself. Sound like a plan? Great. Well, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is roll a D4, and that's gonna pick one of a category of essentials for us to put into today's cocktail. All right, we got a one. This is gonna be a liqueur or a creme. Uh, so, we've got liqueur or creme as our first ingredient. Uh, so we're gonna go on over to the liqueur and creme chart. And we need a D8 for this. So, that's a five. Coffee liqueur, all right. Uh, love me some coffee liqueur. I've got some really good coffee liqueur that I'm a big fan of, so this is exciting. Hopefully this will, hopefully this will come out. Let's see what goes with this coffee liqueur. Let's go ahead and roll a D6 to pick a garnish to go in today's cocktail. That is a two. All right, so we got a two, which is a lemon twist. So we're gonna do Mr. Black with a lemon twist. Now we learned from the Toll of the Dead that coffee liqueur and a lemon twist actually pretty good. So we may have something here, but uh, let's see what else goes into this cocktail because we still need to pick a liquor. That's gonna be chosen by a D10. Nine, vodka, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and put vodka in there. That's not gonna change the flavor a whole lot, but it will make it more uh, impactful, shall we say. Uh, and the last thing we need to do before we name this cocktail is run a little pop quiz. Not for you, for me. Uh, just to prove to you that I have some chance of not making this a complete disaster, I'm gonna roll a D12. And that D12 is going to choose a bar term for us to pick from. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll that for an eight. Free pour. I love this. Free pour is when you don't measure. We're going to guess. We're going to go, you know, this is about an ounce. Uh, and that's, um, you know, to be honest with you, that's how a lot of people make cocktails at home. You know, I mean, maybe you don't have a jigger or you can't be bothered or you don't want to wash it. Um, so you're just going to pour stuff straight into the glass and eyeball it. Today, we're eyeballing it. I can free pour and make this cocktail, so let's go ahead and do that. So the last thing to do is choose a name. You can see I've got this list of names right here. You can see I've got this list of names right here. Uh, these were uh, selector. <clears throat> you can see I've got this list of names right here. These were recommended by friends online, people just like you. And if you also want to be a part of it and suggest new names to go on this list, you can head on over to indecisionist.com slash dungeon barkeep uh, there's a link to a form there that'll let you submit all the names you want, uh, and that link is also in the doobly-doo down below. So you go ahead and check that out if you would like to participate in that way. So let's go ahead and roll a d20 and see what name we end up with. That is a 13 for Brew of Insanity. I mean, coffee is brewed, and this does sound pretty out there, so I buy it. Brew of Insanity. How does it come together? Well, let's find out together on the bar top cam. All right, since we are putting some citrus into this one, I'm gonna go ahead and build it in a cocktail shaker. Start with a few D6 of cold damage. And I am gonna go ahead and make an executive decision so based on what we discovered last time. I'm gonna take a, a bit of the zest of this lemon We'll save that for later. Ah. But I'm also going to get a little bit of lemon juice in the shaker for us here. So we're going to do, I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that half an ounce of lemon juice. Now for our liquors. Let's go ahead and Mr. Black needs to be our main flavor. So we're gonna do a full two ounce pour of 
coffee liqueur. This is a vodka-based coffee liqueur, so it's a little less sweet than what you may have at home. If you're using something like Kahlua that's rum-based, um, just keep that in mind. Your, your mileage may vary from what I am describing. But a little sweetness rarely hurts, especially in this case. So we're going to proof this up with an ounce of vodka. Oh, I was supposed to free pour this. Well, here we are. All right, so there's our cocktail. All that's left to do is shake. The ice is broken up, the tins are chilled. Those are good signs. All that's left is to choose a glass. has got like an espresso foam sort of situation going on. That's exciting. We're just gonna toast this lemon peel just a little bit. See the smoke coming off of there. And we'll just toss that in the glass as a twist. You can see the little toasting I did there. Well, kinda, if it weren't for the light. There's a little bit of sootiness to it. And we'll run that around the edge of the glass as well, just for good measure. Get that nice and oily, and we'll run that along the side. But how does it taste? Okay, this is um, this is fascinating. The lemon that we did put in here comes through really nicely, and the brightness of that lemon cuts through some of the bitterness of the coffee liqueur. The vodka isn't really bringing anything to the party. I think we all knew that was going to be the case. And uh, so as a result, we really just have these two dominant flavors, this lemony freshness with this bitter coffee flavor. Uh, and if it hadn't been for the Toll the Dead cocktail that we did earlier, um, I don't think this would ever have occurred to me as a good idea. But now that I'm getting the chance to try it again, exactly as I wanted to when I said it in that cocktail video for Told the Dead, check out the link in the doobly-doo, um, <laughs> I'm surprised to say that I was absolutely right. This is a great combination, uh, a weirdly great combination. I'm a little bit surprised that this isn't a thing. Uh, maybe it is, and I just don't know it. But um, yeah, lemon and coffee... I'm into it. I'm I'm into this. Um, I mean, it's definitely, it's not going to be for everybody. I don't think this is a, a, like accessible drink. It's not a cocktail that's like, you know, you're not going to serve this in in coffee in. Um, uh, co you're not going to serve this in a college bar. You're not going to serve this to folks who haven't been you know, completely destroyed by years of coffee and whiskey. But um, for those who have, um, it's really nice. And you can see we get that like nice 
espresso-y style crema. Um, it's got almost a gelato-y sort of feel to it. Uh, it's very creamy and smooth. I'm I'm a fan. I really like this. Um, it's weird. Don't get me wrong, but I like it. Okay, this feels like a. This feels like a drink that your adventurers are gonna run into during a downtime. This is this is the sort of cocktail that is gonna come to them when they're meant to be exploring. Uh, and and I realize that that's something that I, I kind of fall back on, uh, maybe because it doesn't feel generally like during the heat of battle is a great time for your adventurers to need to like mix up a cocktail. Although, if you did have a cocktail mancer in your party, uh, class uh, description TBA, uh, um, then perhaps that's what they're doing. You know, they take a round to, you know, pour out some cocktails from the bottles that they keep in their pack and uh, shake it up and, and you, you throw it back in one action. And it's. Excuse me. Sorry about that, friends at home. <clears throat> I, quilting dancer, I, I really seriously am, am putting together a cocktail mancer class, a homebrew class for that, because it's got, it's got some legs, and I like the idea of it, and it, yeah, there's, there's some potential there. So if you have a cocktail mancer in your party and they've got bunches of bottles of stuff like in a bandolier or whatever and they're mixing up cocktails during the middle of battle, maybe that's maybe that's a thing. But I feel like the majority of these are going to come into your story when the adventurers are, you know, in, in a town. They've been encouraged to explore things. They're looking around at what's going on and they need to figure out, um, you know, what the deal of this local area is, what they're what their specialties are, what makes this guy weirder than that lady. You know, those are all things that, they, that take time. That's the exploring part of the game. Um, so I think if you're, um, if you're in the midst of an exploring phase of your session and your characters have this opportunity to, um, to try this cocktail, then, um, man, I... It almost feels like it needs to be whatever your world's equivalent to bocce is. I think this is what you drink while you play fantasy bocce. You know, it's got it's got some like Italianate influences, and so that feels very right to be you know lawn gaming and uh, throwing. Uh, strangely carved balls at a sand pit and uh, exclaiming loudly in Italian uh, or whatever your universe's version of Italian is. Um, I think I think there's something to be said for this as like a, a surprise. Um, so maybe they maybe they are told by the locals that this isn't for everybody and then they drink their first one and they go, hey, actually, some of us really like this, and maybe there's a percentile that you want to roll to see who likes it and who doesn't like it. Um, but regardless, by drinking the local cocktail, they, they are able to get in good with these traditionalists who are playing fantasy bocce. Um, Fachi, if you will. No, don't love that. F no. Anyway, fantasy bocce, whatever you come up with. Um, you know, you're able to get in good with the, the you know, staunch traditionalists who are standing out in the in the square throwing balls at a sand pit and uh, as a result they are willing to share information about the town's history this feels like that kind of drink you know you get in good with the locals you get extra information helps you in the quest you move forward 
Fachi. Yeah, okay. Uh, we got a suggestion during the live taping of the today's show of Fachi as Fantasy Bachi, and uh, I like it. Fachi. That's good. Um, so thank you to uh, Jewel at Heart for that. And I think I'm going to leave it there. I think Fachi is the right answer. This is the this is the cocktail that your, your adventurers drink when they try to get in good with the old Fachi players around the town square. But how about you? Where would you put this cocktail in adventure? Does it fit into the adventure uh, setting that you're already playing in? Tell me in the comments. Uh, you can also like and uh, subscribe. All the things that YouTubers tell you to do really does make a difference. Uh, and until next time, friends, drink adventurously. Fachi!